what's happening party people welcome back to another field trip with us inside the desert oasis room we are at spiritual journey tattoo for part two of our podcast with our filipino tattoo friends and we're going to talk about traditional filipino tattoos today from their actual tattoo shop so this time we're going to do it as a video and let's just take a walk inside here. So here's the uh, entry lobby. And just some cool photos here. Uh, I'm gonna try to recruit some of our friends here at Spiritual Journey for a tour. All right. What's happening, people? Hey! hey. I normally say aloha, we're gonna say mabuhay. Yeah, mabuhay. Mabuhay. Kamusta? Kamusta? We're here at Spiritual Journey Tattoo Shop. And we're gonna take a walk around here. Right off the bat, I see all kinds of, excuse me, all kinds of tribal art. And we're gonna talk about all of that. Is Who wants to go on a tour with me? Sure, I'll go. These beautiful ladies. <laughs> well, like, well, first let's start. Okay, well, let's, let's, we'll start here. Tell us your name. Rona. Rona. Aloha. Mabuhai. Mabuhai. Okay. Well, first, importantly, um, these pictures here, they're all examples of different tribes throughout the Philippines. Here we have the northern Philippines. Like northern here, Luzon. Okay. Like here is Mindanao, though. So it's this is the south of the Philippines. Right okay. And what about this photo in the middle? Oh, see, these are most of the men, like, tribal okay. members. These are an example. So this is also Luzon? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So All male and female. Women. Okay. Is yeah. there a, a gender to tattoos? Well, kind of, yeah. Okay. Like, mostly, like, the tribes in the Philippines, for example, the Kalinga. Uh, women get tattoos mostly for beauty. Okay. However, men, it's usually, like, earned either through um, headhunting war or just... Oh, tattoos. so they're... The, yeah. Okay. So they can't just, like, just go in and get tattooed? Um, it depends. Okay. Really. Uh, so traditionally, yeah. it's earned. Yeah. Okay. Traditionally. Okay. Wow. So these guys, they look like bad motherfuckers, man. <laughs> I mean, like, look at all their tattoos. They must have really, they must have really, like, done some shit to get those, right? <laughs> all right. Let's take a look around. Uh, I noticed that you guys have these. You have male and female, female on this side. Oh, Can yeah. you talk to me about those figures and what they represent? And here's the male. Um, they actually represent like people that um, walk through the mountains. So it's a reminder of their duties okay. and everything. That's why they're always guarded with a shield and a spear. Because even though they collect crops and everything, you never know when there's a raid that's coming. So it represents a woman's bravery and a man's also. Okay, I've seen, I've seen this guy. He's actually he's like the same face, with the hatchet and yeah. holding the head. Uh, and my natural assumption is that is uh, Chief Lapu Lapu. Uh, no, these are from Luzon, and also like the faces vary because they would carve these people as their heroes. That, Got that, it. Uh, that won the battle or whatever. So if you go to Baguio, for instance, in the Philippines, um, you'll see different um, statues in the park. I forgot the park's name, but it's in Baguio. And it, sh it tells their story, like all the, the legends in the battle and everything. Okay, so do you remember our friend, Fancy Poe? <laughs> she was on the podcast. We talked about traditional Filipino tattoos. And I didn't get to see her tattoos the last oh, time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so look how cool they are. Tell me about your tattoos and tell me about why their color is different. Why okay, you, why you so, have a red color. Yeah, we'll just cover that first. So they're red because my original tattoos that were not Filipino. So I had a few little tattoos oh, that were already red. And so okay. we just decided to continue that. Okay. But otherwise, um, as you can see from the Luzon women here, so my patterns are, the my framework follow the Luzon patterns because my family is from Luzon. So if... If you're not from Luzon and you get tattoos from another region, is that considered like bad? Is that a no-no? Um, you would be recommended to get the, if you came here 
that uh, people would recommend you to get your region. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it would make sense, right? Like if you're from just being here in the States, if you're from California, you don't want tattoos that are well, represent like New York or anything. No, we try to encourage uh, a lot of Filipinos to get where they're from. But nowadays, Filipinos are so mixed. Yeah. So uh, Ilocano can marry Visayan. So what, what should we do as a framework, right? So we would do a Luzon framework and then Visayan patterns inside. Yeah. Yeah. So when uh, people that are purists on doing traditional tattoos and they see the framework and they say the patterns doesn't uh, like match with the rest. And they said that's pseudo stuff. They're not knowing the context behind it. How the, the parents is the Locano and the dads, you know? Yeah. Because back in the day, uh, since colonization, people were put together so that it dilutes their culture. Right. So when these people mix, they could lose that after two generations, right? Yeah. So now, as they dig in, when we do questionnaires and people can answer it, that's when we figure out, like, okay, which part of the, the fam do you want to represent the framework with? They sometimes would do the mom side. Got it. Then the dad side's patterns, yada, yada. That's why nowadays it's a mixture of both. When people don't want to get the traditional framework, they wanted to do the, the flowing one, what they so-called uh, Polynesian. But uh, a Filipino guy started that, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, following the muscle mass. And he was from Hawaii. Okay. Uh, his name is Leo Zueta. Okay. But as things evolve, you know, the supposed traditional, it, it, somebody started to innovate it, and it becomes, of course, Hawaii style. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So speaking of which, uh, we talked a little bit earlier before we turned the camera on about the Filipino Im immigrants starting uh, like this tiki subculture. Yeah. And I see stuff here. We started talking earlier. I want to get all that on camera as well. And I mistakenly saw some of your tattoos and I said, oh, you have the shark's teeth. Yeah, yeah. And you corrected me and said, no, those are crocodile teeth. Yes, yeah. So tell me about that. Tell me how that that's different from the Polynesian or the Hawaiian style uh, shark's teeth. Well, we're closer to the continent of Asia. Okay. So the animals and animal spirits that we have, we uh, correlate it with them. Now in Hawaii and Polynesia, the, the, what do you call this? The apex predator over there that shows like how fierce it is. It's a warrior symbol. It's the shark's teeth. Right. And they use it for the weapons to uh, summon like, you know, their, their ancestors, right. you know, because right. they think uh, if the ancestor passed, right, it becomes this this king of the water and stuff. Right. So with us, we have uh, Naga canoes, which is the war canoes, and the Karakoa. The Karakoa is, has a bird in the front. It's a mythical bird. That's why they call it Sari Manok, like Sari Sari, like some kind, right. right? Right. So getting the triangles here, Usually they would do it here too. So when you talk, it's the crocodile. Oh, yeah. okay. And you explained to me when you put it in, in your arm. So like right here in the... in the Yeah, if you put the triangles here, put it right here. Pointing here. So when in battle, when you choke somebody, when you choke it's, somebody the it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the crocodile's jaw. jaw. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 So I love that symbolism because from what I understand from uh, the, the Hawaiian meaning of shark's tooth is protection. Yeah. So... Um, and I, you, you'll have to excuse me because I'm more versed on Tiki and Polynesian yeah, no history worries. because that's the side that I come from, um, even though like I'm Filipino blooded and I want to learn more. That's why I'm here. So let's go for a walk in the studio and let's let's talk about some of the artwork that's there. Yeah, sure. All right. So let me turn this around. <laughs> All right. So let's, let, let's start with the tarantula. I didn't even know there was a tarantula in here. It's from the Philippines? It's a species from the Philippines. Okay. It's over here, actually. Okay, you can see. Is it a she? Yeah, I hope it's a she. But this is the name right here. Okay. That's a scientific name. But I don't know if you have a flashlight, Tangerine but you can see tarantula. she's in there. Okay. See. Yeah. That's the way. I thought we were going to take her out. Thank no. God. Yeah. <laughs> That's an old world species that will bite me. All right. I want to start by talking about these guys right here. Okay, so. Uh, so these guys are, they're called bull gods. They're um, nature spirits. I believe um, our answers believe, uh, believe that they provide protection to our crops. Okay. And also brought prosperity. Is there a meaning behind the symbolism of their arms crossed? That I'm not 
crossed. The symbolism with their arms crossed. Yeah, is there a meaning for that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because they're the watcher of the mountain. There okay. You know? Yeah. Okay, yeah. because uh, I see a few more over there, and and I had a tiki mug made with Tandawai rum. Nice. And that was something that Tandawai was very uh, adamant about, was making the arms cross. Yeah. So we did that with the tiki mug that we made. So, mm. yeah. So, with the crocodile yeah. instead. So, yeah, so his, his arms are crossed. Yeah. And then I saw these guys over here with their arms crossed. Sorry about the mess. No, don't apologize, right? My, that's all my mess right there. So, yeah. <laughs> so right there, you can see the the face tattoo. Look, it has crocodile. Oh yeah, oh, he his mouth and everything. And so then he's got he's got his tattoo. tattoos also on on his arms and yeah. This so, version of the tattoo is actually from Luzon. Okay. The other ones, uh, the Visayan one, is from uh, similar. It's very similar. Okay. Because that's their main animal that of strength. Okay, so. You, you shared something with me earlier before we talk about the other art. Let's go back. I want to look at those masks because sure. we see these masks like, so here's a small version, the guy with the fangs. Yeah. Um, and then here's a couple of big ones. Here's a big one here. And there's another one back here and another one tucked away in the back over there. But let's, let's start with this one. So you had explained to me some of the symbolism that is carved into this mask. Yeah, um, you'll notice the, like the shape that looks like eyes and stuff. Yeah, around the, like yeah. the headdress, right? Those are actually seeds of rice. Seeds of rice, wow. Yeah, and then, um, what do you call this? The steps on his uh, jaw and on his uh, nose bridge. Yeah. Those are steps of the rice terraces. Oh, yeah. oh, so. That's the rice terraces, okay. And then um, the holes on the nose, it's, it, people would see it's like, wow, it's so random or they're trying to make it scales, but it's actually rice being planted. Okay. Yeah. And also on the chin. Yes, on the chin. And plus on the teeth, usually it's jagged and right. it's a zigzag like that, but it means the path of the head hunt. Oh. Yeah, so it's the watcher uh, of bad spirits, so you could guide them. But as the tiki culture uh, in the 70s happened, this uh, a lot of pinoys, like you said, yeah. um, would make these type to, to pass it on as a tiki, as, but they're yeah. still proud of their, like what they did yeah, yeah. the whole time. Yeah. So they rather put their culture there. So yeah, I, I don't yeah. know if it's a, a devolution or evolution of it. Well, so because a lot of the uh, early tiki or Polynesian style bars and restaurants were were uh, run by Filipino immigrants or started by Filipino immigrants. I think a lot of the visual imagery and a lot of the art and stuff were inspired by those immigrants or inspired by the Philippines. So when you see a lot of these guys up here, so where, where is he? When you see a lot of these guys up here, what you're seeing is um, those those were Filipino immigrants bringing those into the bars because that's what they knew yeah. as tropical decor. So, uh, and you have a few other ones here. I'll, let's talk about those. So this one over here, this one's very. Um, you can tell they made this like later on because okay. this is about World War II. When the Japanese came over there, they saw on the the Americans, their, the soldiers with guns. They saw them uh, being such warriors that they imitated, not imitated, but inspired to put the eagle there, the American eagle that's on their patches. So that's why there's an eagle up there. Yes. And it, you could see the way they made the face is a, the terrain of that landscape. Oh, With the rice, yeah. the carabao horn, the American eagle, and then as it goes on, the steps of the rice terraces. So this is like a landmark thing. Yeah, yeah. okay. So what about this one in here? So this one has a different... This one has a different animal on the on the forehead also. Yeah, it's a representative. Uh, you see, again, the eyes looking thing, that's the rice. Yeah. And then the nose bridge to the jaw is steps to the rice terraces and the holes also. The holes are like, like I said before, it's planting rice. Now you can see on top of his, uh, the totem, right? It's a crocodile. Because in the Chico River and Colderier Mountains and stuff, before over hunting, there was crocodiles there. Now, you'll also see on front of that crocodile, it's so abstract, but really that's part of the hornbill bird. 
That's one of their spirit oh, animals. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then the teeth are sharper because this represents the journey. Yes, the okay. vigil before the head hunt. Okay. Wow. I got to get some of these masks now for my bar. <laughs> I know. It, it, you would think it's like pseudo, but they actually, they were so proud of what they did, right? Absolutely. That they, they included it in whatever is selling because uh, during that war, like the Pearl Harbor and everything, a lot of Filipinos migrating over there. Yeah. They still wanted a, a reference of where they came from. Yeah. It got lost in, what do you call this, in so many generations, but at least their great grandfather continued yeah. to do that. And it's amazing that it's the landscape. Too. And these behind you are Carabao horns? Yeah, Carabao horns. Uh, we didn't want to do the skull one because it's expensive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But at least we got the horn to rep, right? And at yeah. least it's, it's one of them desk ones from the Philippines, but I still wanted to rep. And I guess it's the same thinking as the people that made these tiki's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah to yeah. still rep. You yeah, know? of course. Even yeah. though it's like low level in some sense, it still says Philippines, it's still got the Carabao horns, you know? Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's, uh, this is like crazy bad. I'm just learning this stuff because I've seen, this guy up here behind me yeah. in a lot of bars and of course like i knew that that's not hawaiian yeah but now i know exactly how it's tied back to the filipino yeah. immigrants right yeah. so learning something every day and learning a lot here at this uh studio so let's talk about spiritual journey i'm gonna uh turn this around actually let's just leave it the way that it is let's just go for a walk yeah so talk to me about the style of tattoos that you guys do here uh, we, it's all traditional? Yes, uh, we predominantly do Filipino tattoos and of course like other cultures that come in here we encourage them to do like like for instance if it's uh, African-American we would do African tattoos if it's um, Mexica which is uh, from Mexico So I, is that, that explains like this this style of mass up here, right? Uh, yes. Over in the corner? Which, or um, um, These ones. Okay. This one's from Ifaga. Okay. So this one usually when they do the gong for celebration of a headhunt they put the jaw of the individual here. Now, when they do the head hunt, it's supposed to be for the, the moon goddess for the harvest. So this is the gong and this is the moon. And you could tell like the rice bundle is oh, on that Oh, wow. So this is one of their um, presentation, representation of, of that, uh, you know, okay. like, uh, battle. And another person, a bird nesting on his head, but the steps of the rice terraces even his cheek has that so this big smile talks about the great harvest wow and the bird that's uh resting there because it's an omen bird. so everything has a meaning yes what about the bottom one with the there's wings there's a person with wings so they would do like a, a hawk dance or eagle dance so they they're talking about that with the carabao horn and the whole story about like the different landscape they went through yeah because this is celebration okay okay yeah Okay, what about these on the wall here? So there's a male and female here, it looks like. Yeah, it's a reminder of like, since there was no pictures, it's a reminder of their ancestor. And those, the, the um, markings are the same markings that I saw in your books. Yes, they're, they're from Luzon. Actually, Zell did these. She burned uh, the patterns oh, on Oh, okay. Them. Yeah. They're beautiful. So I could tell a story about these two people, uh, the feminine and the masculine. They're beautiful. Wow. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you start by drawing the tattoo on with, what are you using? Uh, it's a skin surfer pen, so it's made specifically for tattoos. Okay. So drawing on skin. Oh, I see. It's a continuation yeah, it's, of what's, 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 what's down. there. Okay. All right, let's see what's happening here. It's come out really nice. He is known for the fine line work here at the shop. <laughs> so I'm doing this for you guys. <laughs> so we're gonna get a tattoo before we leave. And this is the conch shell symbol and explain the the meaning again it's um, the ancestoring the ancestors whispering in the wind ancestors whispering in the wind and i'm doing that because 
using the name Polynesian Pop, what that represents are the Filipino forefathers of tiki, the original bartenders from Don the Beachcomber, our tiki ancestors to the Polynesian Pop movement. That's the reason why I used the name in the first place, is these were people that were establishing this subculture of Polynesian Pop that we all love, but didn't get the recognition that they deserve. So if I use that name, and you see the name and you see me, then that's kind of my way of giving them the platform that they never had. So ancestors, whispering in the wind, that's what this symbol means. And we're doing, this is, uh, what method is this? Hand poke. Hand poke. You see, you get that ink inserted into your skin like that. So talk about this process. It goes to a you're, you're laying the ink under the skin? So it, it like, you go in the skin at a certain angle. At an angle, and you'll okay. Flip, and you do a little flick just to get the ink in there. Okay. 